Hi all, this is the part two video from the chapter forecasting. In the previous session, we learned what is forecasting, the concept and benefits of forecasting, and the useful data which is required for forecasting. In this part, we will learn the following objectives, operational forecasting and forecasting techniques. Operational forecast is often used to manage the hotel's resources, such as how many housekeepers will be needed to clean rooms, how many people will be checked into the hotel, or how many guests will dine in the restaurant. Occupancy forecasts are commonly developed on a month-to-month basis and reviewed by Food and Beverage and Rooms Division to forecast revenues, project expenses, and improve labor schedules. Once all data is gathered of transient and group information is available, reservation forecast is made. There are several types of operational forecast. Each is gener generated based on a specific time period. Forecasts are best when done for short term. The farther out the forecast, the less accurate it becomes. Long-term forecasts are mainly of three types, which you can see are here are 30-day, 90-day, and 12-month. The 30-day forecast is used primarily to monitor individual group bookings. At this point, all groups should have their rooming list in or have made all the reservations. The 90-day forecast is primary yield management indicator. Using historical data, the reservations department can estimate the total number of group rooms needed. 12-month forecast includes detailed annual budgets and marketing plan. Short-term forecasts that hotels uses are three day, seven day, 10 day, and 15 day forecast. Let's see 10 day or two week forecast. The 10 day room availability forecasting is developed collectively by the front office manager and the reservations manager, and also together with a forecast committee in hotel. A 10-day forecast always includes first day-to-day -day forecasted occupancy figures, including room arrivals, room departures, room count, and house count. Second, number of group commit commitments with a listing of each and every group name, arrival and departure dates, number of rooms blocked, number of person, and probably quoted room rates. A comparison of a previous period forecasted and actual room counts and occupancy percentages as well. Let's see three-day forecast. Three-day room availability forecasting is an updated report that reflects an extra current estimate of room availability. It details any tremendous alteration from the 10-day forecast. The three-day forecast is meant to advise management in quality tuning labor schedules and adjusting room availability understanding. And the 10-day room availability forecasting must be completed and allotted to all department offices to help plan their staffing for the upcoming period. Let's see the format of a three-day forecast. This is the format of a three-day forecast where it gives forecasted information. Here you can see in bold, which are of occupied rooms, occupancy percentage, and house count. Uh, here we have seen the, how it is calculated, like previous night occupied rooms. And then we have, you can see the data where you can see minus expected departure rooms, minus early departure rooms, 
plus unexpected overstays plus unoccupied rooms gives you the rooms available for sale and then it the arrivals which are expected for the day are added walk-ins are added and same day reservations are also added and which minus the no shows gives you the occupied rooms forecasted occupancy and the expected house count now this uh, de these details are further distributed to the general manager and all the head of the departments for planning in 10 day forecast format addition to this group details are also added with the extra columns for 10 days and rest other format remains same let's see the next slide forecasting techniques in the recent years large number of techniques of forecasting have been evolved to handle different types of forecasting problems each technique has its special use and the manager has to select that which one is most suitable for application to his problem basic forecasting techniques may be classified as qualitative techniques and quantitative techniques let's take one by one qualitative technique these types of forecasting methods are based on judgments opinions intuition emotions or personal experiences and are subjective in nature they do not rely on any rigorous mathematical computations quantitative techniques these types of forecasting methods are based on mathematical or quantitative models and are objective in nature they rely heavily on mathematical computations types of forecasting which you have just now seen now in qualitative techniques there are further forecasting techniques which are mainly are four executive opinion market survey delphi technique sales force concept let's take one by one executive opinion in this approach group of managers meet gives their opinion and collectively develop a forecast second market survey this approach uses interviews and surveys to judge the preference of a customer this is done to estimate the demand of their products or to identify potential in a new market third delphi technique uh, it is also called as some um, pronounce pronounce it as delphi technique which refers to the systematic forecasting method used to gather opinions of the panel of experts on the problem through the questionnaires often sent through mail in other words a set of opinions pertaining to a specific problem obtained in writing usually through questionnaires from several experts in the specific field in this approach consensus agreement is reached among a group of experts the last sales force composite in this method individual sales person are asked to give their estimate of future sales this is done on the assumption that since the sales people are closer to the average consumers they know the consumers need in this approach each sales person estimates sales in his or her region next quantitative techniques as discussed earlier these are based on mathematical model these are two types majorly time series forecasting and associative or causal forecasting now first time series model time series models look at past patterns of data and attempt to predict the future based upon the underlying patterns contained with those data that is percentage trend or growth method moving average method and so on this method is preferred for long term forecasting 
associative model associative model often called causal model it is assumed that the variable being forecasted is related to other variable in the environment they try to protect based upon the associations they sorry they try to project based upon those associations for example understanding the increase of room sales in the month may june in india room sales is a variable is associated with the variable of holidays as in may june is a holiday time and people visit other cities during this time and stays in hotel which increases the demand of room sales there is an impact of holidays on room sales so here it talks about association of holidays on the variable of room sales i hope in this session we learned operational forecast and its types which are short term and long term we also learn forecasting techniques and its types qualitative and quantitative hope you have understood the session i have also referred these books and sites thank you for watching my video